Hello and welcome back to Station Ears. I'm Mick and this is my new furnace. So yeah, it's taken me a bit of time but I have finally got here. We have feng shui the crap out of this thing, added some more dials and a light, completely rewritten the code, still follows pretty much the same process as was in my build video. So not much has changed there but it's just a hell of a lot easier to write it when you actually figured out the process to do it. So here it is, she's looking rather neat now. Oh, so it's not working as well as I wanted to, but it's working probably better than I'd hoped it would. So I'm pretty happy with it now. Uh, but um, there we go. So what's changed since the build video? Well, not much really. All right, so if we look around the back, it was pointed out to me that you know, as as all the gas is coming back into the combustion chamber, you don't really need the filter on there. Well, yeah, that's true. You don't need it on there. But I found that I did have, once it was running, I did remove it. And I found that I ended up with about you know, a megapascal of hydrogen in each of these tanks there and, and none in my fuel system there. And, and as your waste tank overpressured, I was just blowing all that hydrogen back out into the atmosphere and, and the oxygen as well. So I ended up putting it back on again. If your waste tank is going, that's going back to our gas reclamation system, it probably doesn't matter. But either way, you can replace that with a volume pump and not have to worry about the filtration. I put it back on. You know, suit yourself which way you go on that. Both work. Other than that, that's about all we've changed. A few tweaks here and there to the code. As I say, put an indicator light on it there to tell you what's happening. Uh, put a couple of graphs on there to show you the displays of the pumps and rejigged it all around, prettied it up. It still fits into the space that I had. I sort of said we can have six grids there. I've used up those six grids and one that is still pretty much empty. So um, I've met that group. Now this can work on pretty much any planet. Uh, the radiator there will work as long as you're change the size of the radiator if you're on Europa or somewhere like that where it's absolutely freezing you don't want a huge radiator or that's just going to spoil spoil your, your gas temperatures in there and make life hard for you. Now when you're setting it up important things to notice if you are using my code to maintain your tank temperatures uh, you must have the oxygen connected to input one and the hydrogen to input two. Uh, that's just the way the code works. You'd have to modify the code if you got it the other way around. Um, so now, when you're setting it up, you must first program your stack. Put your chip in here, run the code, and then take the chip and program the furnace controller into it. That's important. If you don't pro first program the stack into it, it won't work. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, so that is the gas one. If you're on a planet where you don't have an ample supply of hydrogen and oxygen, I have the electric one. Just this one here. Now there's a couple of ways you can go about this one. Uh, so there's two systems I've set up. One of them here will use the external atmosphere. So if you're on Vulcan or Venus where you have hot atmosphere, this is a good way to do it. So it'll come through, it'll just suck in the atmosphere splits off the hot and the cold. So in the in the cold one, we have 150 degrees. In the hot one, it's taking it from the 19 degrees it is here to 350. And again, you pump it into the next one, it does the same thing again. It's taking off the cold gas or separating it into cold gas, which is 199 degrees minus and the hot gas is coming out here at 900 degrees. Once again repeat it a third time, splits it off into cold gas at 180 degrees and hot gas at 2150 degrees. So that is going into the hot tank. The cold gas goes into a heat exchanger whereas it can be used with the valve to cool down the cold gas and both of them are topped up as need be from the waste tank. The other alternative, if you don't have an atmosphere and you still want to use an electric one, I have one like this. Now, this one sort of works on a, a similar setup, but it is just using 
the hot and cold there connected to the air conditioner to pump or split the gas into cold and hot which makes the hot gas hotter and the cold gas colder, colder. and once again the hot gas goes straight to the hot tank the cold gas goes to a heat exchanger which is controlled by a valve and they're both topped up once again from the waste tank this one does not require an external atmosphere to do so you can use this one anywhere as an electric heater now it does consume gas from the hot tank as it does that but this process of smelting will produce more than enough gas to make up for that loss how's it all work well, I've got the furnace controlled by a chip, which is just in here. So that is controlling the furnace. Uh, the heating of the tanks is controlled by another chip around the back. Once again, this is one set up. This is the gas heater, which is used for a gas regulated heater. I have another one over the other side, which is an electric one. Um, there it is. And that is specifically made for controlling it with electric heating. Now they both operate pretty much the same, it's just a few changes to a few different things there. But both of these controllers are the same. Now it is important that the front part and the back part are connected on separate circuits because they do use batch commands for reading and writing and if both sides are using pumps, like volume pumps, you don't want to mix them up. So um, yeah, make sure you separate your circuits. Now, I've got one here for the front and another one around there for the back somewhere here it is so that's what we've got there so that's the furnace now for our water dispenser you know, I basically just have an input chute over here which your rocket or Amy's or drilling machines or whatever are dumping into it goes into a heap of sorters which will sort out that's coal steel, silver, nickel, will sort out each of the items there into their own stacker which will stack them into piles of 50 and then they go into either vending machines or storage silos and then into vending machines and that is just hooked up via a cable here. Now I've got two systems hooked up you can't have them both hooked up at the same time because you need them on separate circuits so I've just pulled out the cable there to break it. If you load up this world and want to have a go with the electric one, just connect that cable and disconnect that one, or it won't work. Um, but anyway, let's give it a go and see it in action. Now I have a selector die here, here, which will allow you to select what ingot we want to make. We'll just switch it down to zero, which is just our general smelting there, which we can use for smelting any type of materials. Well, all our basic ones like our iron, gold, copper, and whatever, and let's just grab ourselves a chunk of iron. Um, now, I have had a bit of a practice here with it all, as you can see. Oh, we're good. Now, we have the switch there for the main pumps. Uh, it's just switching it off when you're doing any, when you're building it. Make sure it's switched on or it's not going to do anything. The indicator light says we're green, we're at temperature. We chuck it in, it'll do its thing. Now it says it's over pressure here, so it should be venting, which it is. It spat out a gas. Still over pressure for what it wants, so it's still venting because it's now below temperature. Now it's happy, it's venting, it's filling it back up again. And we're good. We see both the pumps switched on. It was a tiny little bit of hot. So the pot, pot pump only turned up to four, so only a little bit of that. Right, missed. So that is a basic one. So you just chuck any, any of your common materials in there and it'll smelt up a chunk for you. If you're after an alloy, we can just switch to the alloy. So we switch it to steel. It says that temperature is adequate for steel, so do nothing. Um, if I want my materials for steel, I can just push the button. Now they come. There's some coal and some iron and some more iron. And get that out of my hand. So now I can just drop that in there. Now it knows it's making iron, but it won't spit out iron because it knows it wants steel. Uh, 
Keep going. And then it goes as it's melting. It'll do its thing to try and maintain pressure. It's trying to vent out, but of course we're producing more gases quicker than it can vent it out. It's done, it's melted. A little bit of venting. The hot gas is not hot enough, we're good. And there's your steel. Too easy. So, choose something a bit harder. Oops, turn it up, try. So Invar. It immediately knows it's got enough pressure there, it can resolve that one, so it immediately starts up the pump. And we're ready. So we're good enough for Invar. I can't remember what that is, but my computer will. Uh, it looks like it's nickel and iron. goes once again it's smelting iron it knows it doesn't want iron so it's not going to spit it out once again okay nickel's going in save it pressure it has to vent a little bit wait for it and there we go easy now it is it is that bouncing there is one of the things that I would like to eliminate from it as if when it's actually got stuff on the input chute and it's melting, it knows that it shouldn't be trying to reach that pressure. It just should be no. I've run out of lines of code, so I haven't quite got that in there. That's one of the things I would have liked, but yeah, you know, I'm happy to live with this. It's not using a huge amount of gas. Uh, as we can see, our hot tank is almost back up to pressure again. Our cold tank is still at pressure. Not a problem. Once again, we step it up. Solder is a cold one. It knows it's way too hot for solder. So it has to vent a heap of gas. It sort of says by the white light there, it is over pressure. We don't want that, so it spends a little bit of time venting. It's a hot temperature there, so now it switches, says uh, the cold tank is not cold enough to, to resolve that to the proper temperature and pressure, so it's got to keep venting. And I'll keep doing that until we get a, get, a, um, get a green light, and then it should start blowing in gas again. That'll take a little while, so let's Request our ingots. Okay, we've got our green light and a couple of bounces to get it in there. Oh, a few goes on that one. Okay. Still going. <laughs> so when you go some of these ones there, it does take a little bit, but now that I've added something in that, that'll cool it down and things should go a bit better. And we're all done. Oh, okay. And it's resolved it. Well, it hasn't quite resolved it because it's still trying to. Oh, it's got it there now. As I say, it's not perfect, um, but that'll do us. So let's go for something that is a bit more difficult. In about, nah, oops, no. There we go. Ah. Ospoloi, the 50 megapascal one. That's one we all love. Give me my ingredients. Now, we are away. It's inflating, it's adding gas. It's a mixture of hot and cold to make temperature. And 45. Oh, bounce. Not quite. Another bounce. Where's my materials? It's having a few bounces there. It's not even getting closer. melted and we're done too easy that's the hard one to do 
and it's managed to find its proper temperature. Uh, it has used a fair bit of our cold gas on that one there, so and a bit of a bit of our hot gas, but that's getting up the pressure and now good. Um, so if we go to our our hot one, Stalite. Uh, gimme. So now we are venting still. Because we're going from a cold gas to a hot one. It's obviously going to have to vent all that cold gas, or most of it, before it gets to a point where it can actually happily add hot gas. And you occasionally have to keep an eye on the pressure in your waste tank if you're using it a lot, because if you don't want to overpressure that one, because I don't have any safety on that one. Right, so it's vented enough. It says the hot gas is not hot enough. So it's got to keep venting, get rid of more of that cold gas. Probably because it's still melting stuff, we're good to go. Once we get a green light, it'll start pressurising again. Wow, it's not kept much of it. And the 600. Oh, that kept hardly anything. But anyway, it's happy now. There it is. Easy. So, we can do that that quickly. With all of them there, it is so easy to make alloys now. Uh, probably could be a bit more fuel efficient, but um, not without more lines of code. But that is ease of operation there. I'm really happy with that one. That has turned out how I wanted. Uh, it is a pretty complicated build, so be prepared for that. And um, yeah, I'll put it all up on the workshop. Uh, have a look, pull it apart, do what you want with it um, but uh, that's my new toy I am pretty chuffed with this one it works so not as well as I wanted it to but it works probably better than I'd actually hoped um, but I'm happy with that it's restoring its temperatures now so I say I need to improve this one here because it is still trying to get up to pressure there it's going for 20 megapascals it's been going for ages and it's currently got up to 12 but it's chuffing along it'll get there so if you want to get a high production rate furnace uh, that's probably not the one to use if you're using a gas one yeah this one's great this will this will do it for you um, but yeah that's about all I got for today so that's my new furnace it'll be on the workshop so there's four lots of code there you'll need the furnace controller the stack controller um, to run the furnace and one of the heat managers if you're using the electric or the gas heat managers. Um, that's all today, so till next time, happy building. See ya. Join me, Wilson, and together we can rule the galaxy. Who's your daddy?